Hi everyone, this is Adriana, part of Starry Sky Readings, and I'm here today to talk about Jupiter Retrograde, which is happening October 9th all the way till February 4th of 2025. So this retrograde in Jupiter will be lasting for four months in the sign of Gemini, and it'll actually remain in Gemini till I believe about June 2025, since Jupiter has a very large orbit. It remains in a zodiac sign for quite some time. So I'm going to discuss the galactic astrology around this Jupiter retrograde. It is making a conjunction to the fixed star Capella, uh, which is part of the Auriga constellation. And it's also making a very tight conjunction to Bellatrix, which is in Orion constellation. I don't know why I blinked out for a second. <laughs> I'm also going to give some very general horoscopes at the end of this video on how it's going to be affecting your rising sign. Uh, it can also apply to your sun and moon sign as well, but mostly the rising sign is going to be uh, the most influential. So stay tuned for that. If you are interested too in getting your own galactic astrology reading from me, um, please feel free to check out my email in the description below on how you can contact me. I also do uh, past life readings, so sometimes I do a combination past lives and galactic astrology going even beyond Earth lifetimes, uh, tapping into other realms. And then I also can do uh, just tarot readings. Also, I've been a tarot reader, if you're new here, uh, for almost five years now. I also do a podcast, which you can check out on my Starry Sky Readings channel. There's a whole playlist of our videos where we talk about galactic astrology and all things happening energetically in our lives. If you want some more input on what's going on for this month, so let's get into Jupiter here. Now, when we think of Jupiter, Jupiter is a very lucky planet. It usually pretends to lucky omens and growth. Uh, philosophy, intellect, things like that. Now, when it's going retrograde, we're kind of pulling back and instead of it going outwards, outwards, external Jupiter, we're going more internal, inside, um, introspection with Jupiter retrograde. So this is a very introspective time, generally speaking, for a lot of us that we might be experiencing. It is a perfect time for that introspection and reflection uh, on things, especially when it has to do with healing um, or even just intellectual matters. Some of you might be feeling more prone to curiosity, researching, um, as this is a great planet when it comes to those things. And instead of looking outwards, we're looking more inwards for that sense of knowledge and even inspiration. And Jupiter is also, I think, of traveling. So instead of the outward physical, literal traveling with this retrograde, I feel we are experiencing more of the inward journey at this time. So through February, you might be feeling, especially with this, um, for most of us uh, in the Western hemisphere, we're going you know, through winter, right? So it's kind of really slowing us down and getting us grounded in our bodies and to really have that inward journey um, kind of hibernation hermit mode throughout uh, the season and like I said it's lasting till February 4th so I think it's actually all in great timing here so good synchronicity with this happening uh, at this time so I'm just sharing my screen uh, for anyone interested in seeing what this chart looks like for the start of Jupiter retrograde, keep in mind I am based in the UK, so this chart might look a little different depending on your location. It might look slightly different, uh, but generally speaking, it's still going to be um, conjunct these fixed stars that we see here. And I am going to talk about two of them that are making the very tightest orb, and that is Capella and Bellatrix. So I'll go into that soon, but I also want to just mention that Jupiter retrograde, it is making a sextile to Chiron and Aries here. 
Chiron's also been in retrograde at this time. So I feel that this is a great time for healing, healing wounds, um, any ancestral wounds of that nature. Um, even collectively speaking with Chiron and Aries, we've, we've seen a lot of wounds in the world, right? You know, there's a lot of wars, unfortunately, happening. Um, so I do feel that this could be a time for more of that to slow down. I really hope so. Um, to really slow down and to start the healing process and to, again, uh, on an individual level, all of us looking more within and having that self-reflection, um, putting the brakes on that type of energy. Now, I am seeing some other things, though, with the astrology that could be a bit chaotic, but I think for the most part, though, uh, the positive spin on this is it is kind of putting the brakes on these um, very strong energies that are happening in our lives. So I'm going to get into the fixed stars now, and I am going to give a bit of predictive astrology with these fixed star alignments that I see happening here that I feel um, guided to share with you. With Capella here, Capella is part of the Auriga constellation, and Capella is one of the 15 Bohemian stars. This has the nature of Mercury and Mars. And interestingly enough, Bellatrix, the next star that we're going to look at, also has the nature of Mercury and Mars. And Jupiter being in Gemini, Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury. So we have a lot of that um, Mercurian type of energy happening at this time, very, very much so. So what does that mean? So this is a lot of intellectual type of energy happening, uh, curiosities, uh, again, inward reflection, study and research. So those of you who are maybe involved in studying, you might feel really uh, engrossed in your work, you know, really diving into your research or people who are looking to do that might feel more guided to do so on topics that interest you. So it's a really great time for those type of intellectual pursuits and research. With Capella, uh, according to George Noonan, an astrologer from his book, uh, he does say that one of the most, that this is one of the most fortunate constellations, Auriga constellation. But this could be an omen for earthquakes as it, as regards to any solar eclipses, which I found to really stick out to me reading that because we did just recently have a solar eclipse a few days ago at the time of recording this. It was on the 2nd of October. So with that combination, I don't want to startle anyone by any means. I do think that there could be more heightened activity when it comes to earthquakes, but I think the good news is because Jupiter is in retrograde, I don't think it will be anything um, too impactful to be honest i think the jupiter retrograde is going to kind of slow things down because we're going it's it has the illusion of going backwards in our skies and that affects us energetically speaking so including the weather even this does happen i even uh predicted in a couple of videos back in my podcast on i believe it was the uranus retrograde there was something with pisces and seeing more impacts of rainfall which isn't too surprising since we do get more rainfall in this season, um, but I was getting the message of the floodgates opening. I think that had to do with not only flooding and the hurricanes going on, but also the floodgates opening with lots of information coming out uh, that we see in the public eye, but I'll probably discuss maybe more of that in a different video. Anyways, going back to Capella though, I think that's just something that we can watch out for. So I think on a personal level, just take your time with things. Don't act too hastily. Um, this is a very, very good time, October, for inward reflection. And throughout this whole course of the retrograde through February and this, the darker months, the darker season, to have more time to self-reflect. Take good care of yourself. Um, having self-care. We talk about that a lot in our podcast too, and it is so important to do that and make time for that. 
I also want to talk about fixed star Bellatrix, which is in the Orion constellation, Orion the Hunter. Okay, so Bellatrix is more of the feminine energy. The Orion constellation is very masculine um, as him being Orion the Hunter, right? But Bellatrix, she's that feminine energy coming in, but she's the female warrior. That is what this uh, star means, Bellatrix, or the Amazonian. I always think of Wonder Woman when I think of Bellatrix. So, or Diana, or Artemis. Okay, so that kind of female warrior, feminine warrior energy is coming in here with Jupiter in retrograde. Again, this also has the nature of Mars and Mercury. With this alignment, I feel it's important that we be very careful to think before we speak because people born under uh, Bellatrix are said to have very sharp tongues. Now, with this being more of a transit, I think just generally speaking, we should be very careful <laughs> before we speak. So just be mindful of your words. Don't act too hastily with that Mars energy also coming into play here. It's just something that I think is important to keep in mind. With this alignment to Bellatrix also, and with Jupiter making the sextile to Chiron, I really feel like this is also particularly a time for the healing of feminine wounds. Uh, no matter what your gender is, you know, we all have both masculine and feminine within ourselves. Sometimes we might embody one more or the other, um, but this is an opportunity I'm seeing here, particularly with the feminine finding some sort of healing here with Bellatrix. And Bellatrix kind of takes on more of that dark feminine role. So the dark feminine is not necessarily bad. Sometimes she is needed. Um, I've talked about this in previous videos. Um, to give an example, the goddess uh, Lakshmi would be more of the light feminine, like Venus or Aphrodite um, or Freya. But then on the other end, the more quote unquote dark feminine, we would have, you know, if we're going to compare Lakshmi, we'd have Kali. Kali is like that female warrior coming up. She is um, a warrior, even like Athena in Greek mythology coming up here um, when it is needed, of course. So, you know, it's not overdoing it. It's not over abusing um, not trying to mm, dominate um, over the masculine. It is being triggered, I feel, for some people at this time. And maybe over these next few months, um, if you are feeling that, this is a time for you to reflect and to feel into your dark feminine. I talk a lot about doing shadow work, identifying your shadow and integrating that within yourself. The last thing you want to do is suppress your shadow or deny it. You want to at least acknowledge it and see how you can work through it so that you can become the best healed version of yourself that you can be. No one's perfect. <laughs> so all you can do is just try to be the best healed version that you can be. So I do think there's something to be said here with some feminine energy being healed here and that feminine warriors kind of stepping up to the plate here to heal those things. The opportunity is there to have that time to heal. Now with that, like I said, with this alignment, do be careful though of thinking before you speak, you know, don't, don't lash out with it. You don't want to sabotage yourself. You know, you want to have that time to heal and identify anything um, that has been wounded on that side of things without creating more uh, chaos of the situation, okay? Um, some of you might be feeling that more than others, but it's definitely coming into play at this time on a collective level. I would say, too, some other things to watch out for would be some travel issues could be possible. Not anything too major, um, but we do have Mercury retrograde, the infamous Mercury retrograde. It is happening again in December, so I think more during that time. We could see more issues with travel uh, at this time, though, from October to November, I'd say, could just be more slowed down with travel, um, or just maybe you're not going to places as much or not able to go out as much or travel as much. 
This could also affect communication because again, this is in Gemini and Gemini is all about communication. So there can be uh, technology slowdowns, uh, internet slowing down more. We've had a lot of solar flares as well, which uh, is, I think, affecting the internet too. So there's been a lot of big spikes recently. I'm sure that there will be more, so you can expect that as well. Uh, this could also affect money a little bit too. Investments could be really slow moving at this time. So just something else to keep in mind for this period here. Okay, before I go into the horoscopes, I just want to say um, if it resonates for you, please comment down below. I love to hear your feedback. If anything resonates for you, please do like this video. It really does help me with the algorithm on YouTube. And please subscribe if you enjoy these videos. But now I'm going to go into the horoscope. So this is just going to be very general again, based on your rising signs, but you can check your sun, moon, and rising signs. So let's start off. We're going to start with Gemini because this is affecting you the most with Jupiter and Gemini in your first house. This is affecting you as an individual, your personality, how you see yourself, and how others see you. Um, you might be going through a little bit of a identity crisis during this time. Hopefully not too much, though. Again, use this time to have introspection and kind of self-reflect, see everything uh, you've been through, what you've accomplished, and where you're at now. I mean, think of the journey. Think of the journey that you've been on thus far and how you've grown as a person. Okay, again, nobody is perfect. We hear a lot about healing and being healed, but healing is an ongoing process throughout our whole lives. And very, very rarely does anyone ever become fully healed unless you're um, maybe the Buddha. <laughs> but yeah, no Geminis. Um, just take some time for yourself. That's what you're being guided to do right now. Take time out for yourself and take care of yourself. Um, if you are feeling like you're a little confused on your identity, your self-identity, explore things that you enjoy doing. Have that time to explore Uh your sense of identity at this time, Geminis, and take good care of yourselves. So then going into Taurus, Taurus, this is affecting your second house. Um, so Taurus, this could be affecting your finances. Um, you could see a, kind of kind of a lull at this time with your money and finances. If you own your own business, you might see, you know, it kind of slowing down a little bit or you're not getting as much work. Um, you can still work hard at it, though, and I don't think it'll be too, anything too major, but it's just something to look out for. It might be a great time to work on more business goals or uh, new ideas and trying different things, so you can explore that. If it's not finances, too, it could also just be um, relationships in general, whether it's romantic, um, colleagues, or friendships anything like that. Relationships could be kind of affected at this time. That's where you may be more guided to look within yourself. Um, when it comes to relationships, maybe there's been some communication issues with people as well that you have experienced that you can take some time to um, just reflect on a little bit. Is it something that needs to change or is it is the ball in your court or you can make your plan of action from there and decide uh, how to go about that. All right, Aries, so this Jupiter retrograde is affecting your third house. Okay, so there's something here involving your community. You could be seeing some, mm, some kind of changes in your community. Um, even, this might sound kind of silly, but them working on something, internet, I'm trying to think of those wires. <laughs> I don't know why that's what's coming up for me, but you might be seeing more of that at this time for whatever reason um, when it comes to the internet or if there's internet issues, maybe. Um, but yeah, stuff in your community coming up. Also, this has this might have to do with your siblings. You might be reaching out to them or they might actually reach out to you at this time. So don't be surprised if you hear from them, maybe a long lost a sibling that you haven't connected with in a while. Expect some unexpected things like that happening when it comes to your siblings 
and or your community. Pisces, uh, so this Jupiter retrograde is affecting your fourth house. So it is affecting your home life and family. It could even be your relationship too, if you're married or um, your relationship with your family at this time, it is being affected. If you were planning to, this might be a message for some of you, if you were planning to have a family, actually, it might be a little delayed at this time as, you know, Jupiter is about expansion and growth. Um, but with the retrograde, it's kind of going inwards now. So it's kind of slowing down that growth here. So uh, just take your time with things. Uh, if you're doing any sort of housework, also, Pisces, um, it's going to just kind of, I think, be a slow moving project at this time is what I'm trying to say. So things are just a little bit more slow moving when it comes to um, your home with any projects you're working on um, or your, you know, family life at this time. It is a good time, though, to have more time at home um, and to take more of that um, relaxation type of time at home, just in the being in the comfort of your home, I would um, suggest making that time to do that and um, making it your, you know, your sacred place, your home should be your sacred place, your, your safe space, whatever you want to call it. So it should be a relaxing space for you. So uh, maybe make that your goal and your focus during this, uh, this time, these next few months. Okay, so Aquarius, Aquarius, this Jupiter retrograde is affecting your fifth house. So something to do here for some of you with children, um, if some of you are trying to have children, you might actually be um, having a hard time the next few months um, conceiving. Now, hopefully that's not the case for all of you. Um, but if you are experiencing that, that could be why, because of Jupiter. Jupiter is all about growth and expansion, but we are in retrograde, so it's really slowing that down. So if you are somebody that is trying to have children or more children at this time, you might see that kind of slowing down. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen by any means. It just means that it might take a little bit longer than uh, anticipated, okay? Uh, Venus is in Scorpio, though, so this is a great time for romance. So, you know, have fun with it. <laughs> also, Aquarius, this can... If you're not, you know, trying to have kids, this could have to just do with creativity at this time. So um, you might be feeling uh, maybe a lack of creative ideas at this time. So you can take the time to, especially if you are a very creative type of person, you could take that extra time to just kind of reflect and sit with things that you enjoy doing that are creative and take your time with it. Don't feel rushed into doing it. If you are doing creative projects, again, it just might be more slow moving at this time. So just keep, keep that in mind here with this impacting your fifth house. Okay, so Capricorns, Capricorns, this Jupiter retrograde is affecting your sixth house here. So Capricorns, yeah, this is affecting your daily routines, okay? This could even have to do with your health, so do be careful. Um, take extra care of your health uh, at this time. Now, with Jupiter and Gemini, I would say maybe more so the mental health kind of coming up, so don't overthink. You know, Gemini is the, the thinker, right? So you want to make sure you're not overthinking things, um, so don't fall into any of that, you know, as best as you can. Try not to do any overthinking um, and just watch your mental health at this time. Um, now, when it comes to your daily routines, you might see a more um, bit of a lull when it comes to just the day to day in general. Um, it might be just more slowed down or maybe you were feeling much more busier. Um, it just might go at a more even pace or even more slower paced. If you do some sort of day-to-day -day activity that involves, uh, which many of us do, you know, with communications and technology, um, you could see that there's a bit less of that during the next four months for whatever reason. You know, Jupiter might be affecting that. So if that happens, that is why. But it is a good time, though, for you to instead of being 
you know, really rushed day to day, it is a great, you know, the blessing in it is that you can really take your time every day. Um, you know, this is a chance for you to stop and smell the roses, so to speak, take it more at an even pace. So things maybe won't feel as rushed. Uh, work with it the best that you can, okay? And make sure to just take good care of your health, whether it's physical or mental health. Feeling more towards the mental health with the um, Gemini there, okay? Keep that in mind. So take good care of yourselves, Capricorns. All right, Sagittarius. Sagittarius, this, um, this is affecting your seventh house, this Jupiter retrograde. Okay, so for those of you who are married or in um, a committed partnership with somebody, um, this is affecting that relationship. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean anything bad, so don't freak out too much. <laughs> uh, Venus is also in Scorpio at this time, so it's actually a really good time for romance. Um, I think it's moving out of Scorpio, um, I think near the end of October or the middle of October, but still, um, I think, you know, it's nothing to be too concerned over, to be honest. I, what I'm seeing more here is that there might just be some slowdowns of communication kind of at play here. So Jupiter is in Gemini. Gemini is very much all about communication and things. Or if you guys were planning to travel somewhere, maybe you are you might be having just some issues planning that. Or maybe somebody wanted to travel, um, but the other person, you know, just can't do it or it's just not a good time. It's not the right timing. Little communication issues, I would say. Um, it could be even that you're seeing uh, less communication and it might just be because of that Jupiter and Gemini energy. Um, both of you might be feeling um, just like doing things on your own and not uh, just doing your own things. One person though might be feeling that more than the other. So um, don't take it too personally. They just might be feeling more of that introspective energy at this time with Jupiter and Gemini. Um, going retrograde. So um, use this time to um, explore things that you enjoy and doing things um, on your own. You can still do things, of course, as a couple, but do your own thing and have your own space with things. So that just might be happen happening a bit more um, at this time. But again, I don't see anything too crazy with that. So nothing I would say to be too concerned about. You know, if there is, obviously, Use healthy communication and just like I was saying with those star alignments, be very careful on what you say. You know, you don't want to lash out and, you know, start an unnecessary fight unless it's absolutely needed. Of course, sometimes they're needed, right? Just be, um, you know, careful. Think before you speak, basically, if it is coming to that for some of you. Okay, so Scorpios, Scorpio, this Jupiter in Gemini is affecting your eighth house. Scorpios, you with the eighth house that is um, right at home there with you, Scorpio. So you guys are really going deep. Um, you guys are always going deep, I feel like, Scorpios. Um, so yeah, you guys are really taking this to, uh, to the next level with going inwards. And some of you just might be more reclusive at this time, um, just being more hermit mode. And that's okay. You know, if you feel that you need that, if you feel called to that, then, you know, take this time, especially as we are, depending on what part of the world you're in, of course, we're going into the darker season. It's a great time, a great opportunity to have that kind of introspective time, go hermit mode <laughs> and just um, take care of yourself. Take care of your mental health too, um, with this being in the eighth house as well. This could be a very transformative time as well for you um, when it comes to communication and healing in wounds, um, maybe communication wounds that you've had. Maybe it was from yourself or from amongst other people, um, your interactions maybe with other people. Of There could be some lack of uh, sex drive happening here as well with Jupiter going retrograde in your eighth house. So if that happens, you know, that's why. But, you know, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it won't happen. But you could just see that kind of slowing down a little bit, whether from yourself or from whoever you might be involved with as well. Okay. Okay, Libra. So Jupiter going retrograde in Gemini here is affecting 
your ninth house. So your house of philosophy and higher learning is being impacted here. Some of you guys might be really diving into your studies here, Libra. If you are learning something new at this time. Um, you're really going to be diving into that, really immersing yourself into that. And I think it's a great opportunity for you guys to go into that. Um, now, if you aren't doing that, you might be feeling pulled to do that at this time. So yes, it is a great opportunity. So if you needed a sign to, you know, start up something you've been interested in or learning something new, uh, this is a really wonderful time for you to uh, to do that th these next few months here. Um, whether it's learning something brand new or even going back to something and re-exploring something again that you might really enjoy. So dive into that and, you know, see what you find. You might find something that you really um, enjoy or just, you know, you end up learning something new out of it. But you might also end up um, learning new things, like new things might come up in just your life in general that um, you weren't aware of. So Jupiter being in Gemini could reveal that and kind of bring that out more. Um, so yeah, it's again, very much an inward introspective time. So you are being guided to, um, to do that, to go into that um, and enjoy whatever it is you might be learning or relearning here. Hey Virgo, so Jupiter retrograde is going to be affecting your 10th house here. So it, it does involve uh, work-related things in your career. So the Jupiter retrograde being in Gemini, you might see more of a slowing down here when it comes to your job. So especially with it being in Gemini, if you do any sort of thing with communication here, um, phone calls, emails, maybe you do something with uh, reaching out to customers, customer service, you might see a kind of slowing down of it at this time or not as busy as it normally could be. Um, so if that does happen, just know that is why. Um, if it's not more, if it's not really with the work itself, it could just be more so amongst your coworkers and things like that, where the communication is really lacking at this time in your job, um, or just seeing a lack of that um, communication flow in general coming in with when it comes to your work and things like that. Um, if you travel for work, again, there could be a very, very much a slowing down of that as well happening. So uh, I wouldn't expect, you know, huge growths. Uh, it could still happen, of course, you know, promotions and things, you know, it's not like it's unheard of. I'm sure it could still happen. At this time, it's not something that would be as likely to happen, any sort of promotions or moving up um, in the job, so things like that. So just keep that in mind. And of course, just, you know, use careful communication. It is a great time to really dive into your work um, and really get into it. And maybe you find uh, new ways of doing your job, or if you have your own business, you might find really good new solutions that you can try out and practice. So it is a great time to really immerse yourself and just kind of dive into your work at this time. So even though it's kind of going at a more slower pace than what you might prefer, um, it is actually a really great time for you to get into your work. Okay, so nothing too bad there. So don't worry about that. Okay, so now going into Leo's. Leo's, this uh, Jupiter retrograde is affecting your 11th house. So I'm feeling like Leo's, um, there's something here with some groups of people. Um, social circles might kind of slow down these next few months, uh, maybe just not going out as much or not communicating as much as maybe you, you might be used to or might want to with it being, you know, Jupiter and Gemini. So you can expect there to be just maybe less messages from your friends at this time um, or just lack of communication kind of happening there. If you were hoping to plan uh, sort of um, like group outings, like going out to places or even traveling, uh, some of those things might fall through or just not quite work out the way that you wanted to. Doesn't mean it won't happen, um, but it just might take <laughs> some more um, teeth pulling to to get it going, okay? <laughs> um, I will say too, for you guys, do be careful of Mercury retrograde happening in December. 
it's sometime from December to January, some period in there. Um, not a good time to travel. So if you are planning anything like that, just keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, but all in all, just really, you know, you can really utilize this time to have more time for yourself, Leos, and to um, have more introspection and being able to slow down a little bit here, okay? And just go at a more even pace. So take good care of yourselves at this time and balance things out. Okay, so last one, we have Cancers. We come to you, Cancers. Uh, so Jupiter retrograde is affecting your 12th house, okay? So 12th house, I think of the 12th house, spirituality, ancestors, past lives here. So could be all those things <laughs> for some of you. Um, it could be just one of those things. But yeah, so with Cancers here, I would say there is a kind of, introspection here maybe some of you are thinking more on your uh your family your ancestors here even um, maybe people that have passed away in your family you might be just having that more on your mind here taking some time to really go into perhaps your spirituality this is a great time to do that it really is and especially with this going into um the darker season depending of course where you live um, this is a great time for you to kind of have that inward journey, that inward spiritual journey. So if you're being kind of pulled towards that and called to that, um, I'm a cancer rising myself and I'm feeling that as well. So, you know, just go with it, see where it takes you and explore that and integrate that. And of course, you know, be careful with it to not, you know, let it um, pull you down too much of a rabbit hole, I guess. But you want to, yeah, if you want to explore more of your spirituality and getting more in tune um, with yourself and maybe your intuition even, this is a wonderful time for you to really explore that cancers. So, yeah, your ancestors too might feel close. You might feel close to them at this time. The veil is thin in October here around this time of October. So um, you, if some of you, you know, have that, I don't personally have that ability, but some of you might be having dreams or feeling their presence here, um, looking out for you. So, um, obviously, you know, you can, you know, just feel protected and divinely guided there with them. Um, do of course use protection, um, spiritual protection <laughs> is definitely, yeah, important to do. Um, so if you are diving into more spirituality, so take extra care of spiritual protection as you explore your inwards journey here through your spiritual path here, Cancers. Okay, so you have a very spiritual uh, Jupiter and Gemini, I feel. So you might be getting yeah, intuitive messages coming through here, especially with it in Gemini. So really cool to see that for you, Cancers. So so uh, yeah, we're already at the end of the video here. Thank you all for watching this video.